Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming back here and watching my video about IELTS speaking. Right, we are going to discuss about what IELTS speaking is and how long does it take, how long does it last and how to deal with the questions from IELTS speaking. And you will also get the tips from the expert. This is, these tips are official from IELTS IDPs, so they're pretty uh, reliable. Okay, let's let's get into it. Okay, let's discuss what IELTS speaking is all about. Well, you guys, uh, if you watch my video, I will include it here. Uh, you know that IELTS speaking will take around eleven to fourteen minutes, and the level of difficulty will be pretty much the same for both IELTS General Training and IELTS Academy. You know, it's worry about that. All right, the interview will be conducted in person, so you will be just like this. Uh, you get only one table and one yeah, no, but because you need to talk to the examiner in person, not online, so. It will be interesting for you guys to practice with with your friends or with you with someone who already has or who has already taken the IELTS exam or someone who knows English better. So in IELTS speaking, we have uh, three parts. Part one, uh, this is introduction and interview. It lasts for four to five minutes. You're going to get familiar topics for the general questions such as home, family, your work, your studies will be pretty much like that. And part two, it's all about individual long run, yeah, that's what they call it, and it lasts for three to four minutes. So you will be given a card, it's not actually a card, but you got to have uh, some kind of square, consists of Questions. <laughs> yeah, let's just say it, car. Okay, uh, you will be given one minute to prepare your answer. You will be giving uh, a speech. Let's imagine that's your own pet talk. <laughs> you talk for one two minutes on a particular topic, and the examiner will will set the time. So you don't need to bring any. Uh, timer or yeah, because you will be not allowed to bring any electronic device. Okay, in part three, are we going to discuss all of them? I will give you the example. And part three, this is the time when when you uh, where you uh, spend more time in answering question because you will get uh, abstract issues and ideas and occasionally or often the questions are still connected to the, the topic uh, before it's like the topic in part two so you got to be able to connect or make them somehow uh, plausible from your previous answers so this is what part two looks like. We could see that this is the example of the instruction that you must follow. And these are the questions that you, you need to answer, all of them. My best advice is you don't write the entire question, but make keywords, you know, write some notes, yeah, you will be given a piece of paper and also a pen, a pencil, I guess, or a, a pen. So, for example, who who this person is, and then you just write the name of that person without telling, uh, without writing the detail of that person, because you need to elaborate that when you speak, not in your writing. And what work this person does, maybe for like governor, for example, and then. People and you make a, some kind of brain test in your brainstorm. I think if you guys have done uh, 
conducting no i think you, if you have done some kind of uh, making brainstorming i think you are familiar with that and all the reason here in part two you guys are required to elaborate and answer longer until two minutes maximum you don't have to worry one day if, uh, when you take the uh, when you answer this part two and then the examiner say okay time's out and then you're still talking it it it's not going to affect your band score in your speaking because it's not about how you can answer it in time it's it's all about how you make your answers relevant to the questions i think we we, we can see later the descriptors okay move to the tips from the expert but i think before we move to this part let's see what does it look like for all parts in IELTS speaking so we have part one here as you can see there it's so easy right where do you usually watch tv make sure you guys have the correct tenses in all the grammar here but i'm going to discuss that further later as you can see the part one only discuss very general topics familiar one and in part two we already saw it and in part three as you can see they this is a uh, usually the examiners only choose one topic a choosing word or maybe work-life balance or if the examiner thinks that they still have time they will ask you all of this question in part three so you've got to be ready with that and somehow in my case the examiner asks questions that are not from uh, he, her guideline because they kind of have a book pretty much like this pretty much like that um, and then they close it the book they they um, ask us to to kind of have a conversation but remember this is an interview so there won't be any response from the examiner do not expect that they will have some kind of uh, happy face or whatever you like whatever you think it even if the examiner looks mean to you or unfriendly doesn't mean if they are not interested in what you're saying maybe they're just tired or maybe they just uh, they just don't care about what you say they record your your interview and then they will assess it with the other uh, expert the other examiner so they will decide what band score you you might get so yeah just because they look mean doesn't mean that they're not uh, they don't like your speaking or your grammar is wrong like that no okay so Pretty much like that, we can see uh, descriptors. I will also provide this uh, on the link below, on the uh, description below. I'm sorry. <laughs> we okay. We focus on seven probably. Okay, this is a public version, meaning that they have confidential descriptors. Okay, they are not allowed for publics like us to see focus on seven fluency and coherence speak at length uh, without noticeable effort or loss of of coherence may demonstrate language related hesitation at times or some repetition and self-correction just like me i think i still have self-correction and repetition and also uh stutter yeah <laughs> but that's fine uh, this is one of many ways that I use to practice my uh, English speaking. Uh, it uses a range of connective and discourse markers with some flexibility. Well, yeah, I think uh, if you attend my class, I hope you guys, or just watch my live later. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys learn a lot from that. And many things we can see here, uh, lexical resource, grammatical range, I won't I won't discuss. I will not discuss 
uh, all of this because I don't think that's enough for me. It's Friday anyway, guys. I need to go to the mass to pray. Pronunciation so, uh, shows all positive features of Pen6 and Sun, but not all the positive features of Pen8. What is that? Okay, you can see that one. Uses a wide range of pronunciation features, sustainable thing. Understanding this, and then I'm sure you guys will a clear ideas of what a good speaking is in IELTS speaking section. I hope you guys can get eight or even higher. <laughs> well, good luck with you guys. And here we go back to our presentation. So 10 tips from expert, don't memorize the answer. I know that a lot of good answers online um, are really intriguing. So, but the question will always be different, okay? So don't try to memorize them. Don't use big and unfamiliar words. If you don't know what big words or unfamiliar, unfamiliar words that you are using, I strongly suggest you guys not to use them. For example, like plethora or fathom or many other fancy words that no, not so many people use it, just don't. Use a range of grammatical structures. Maybe your tenses, not only present tense, but present continuous, past tense, and all the tenses you know, and also conditional sentences, and many different grammar out there. Okay, guys? And don't worry about your accent. They will not assess your accent. They will assess your clarity. If you have a Indonesian accent like me, I think that it that doesn't matter. As long as the examiner can understand you and you feel that your speaking is clear, your accent doesn't really matter. If you want to use the what can I say? British accent or Irish accent. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to make your band score higher or lower. It doesn't really matter. And pause to think. Maybe, but there are ways to use the pauses to think that it's. But it's not going to be like me. Um, like you know, maybe something else. For example, in my opinion, probably I think as you can read the whole thing in this website i will provide it on the description below and avoid using fillers such as like you know um just like i said before try to sound more formal okay extend your answers elaborate yeah just like what i just what i, what I said before you must have um, broader ideas what you're going to say don't just stuck with yes I, uh, I I love watching Stranger Things for example that's your favorite TV show but and then that's it you must elaborate a little bit as long as the examiner doesn't stop you you need to keep going and smiling has pronunciation uh, if you well I just think about it <laughs> well when you speak and then you uh, use your smile a bit it will help you to have wider mount and then that helps you maybe to increase or improve your pronunciation to be clearer don't speak in monotone try to avoid repetition it's quite hard okay and the last one is practice common IELTS topics well if you are in my class of course we're going to practice that a lot and we're going i'm going to give you the feedbacks that you need Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys found this lesson useful and helpful. I hope you guys see you next time. Bye-bye.